Now just over 500 expat Māori cast their votes in the last election. The majority were living in Australia. It's an abysmal number, considering more than 19,500 expat votes were counted for general seats. And the latest figures show that more than 140,000 Māori are living in Australia. So is it a case of out of sight, out of mind? We went to Brisbane and Sydney where we discovered some very different views and met the only Māori politician standing for office outside of Aotearoa. Happiness is pretty simple for Lily Matiaha. But it's her long-term stability which pushed her parents to move to the Gold Coast nearly five years ago. When we first had a little bit, you know, we kind of were told that we would need to be financially secured. We come over here, chase the money so that we can build something, build our kind of you know, our tank up really good for her, so that um yeah, so that she wouldn't miss out on any development programs. But jumping the ditch hasn't meant a greater level of service for Lily's Down syndrome. Did you have any idea about the level of support or, or non-support that you may receive? No, no, we didn't. We didn't at all. There are two types of Māori who live here. The first arrived before 2001, the second arrived after that date. And for that group, many of them say they've missed the lifestyle boat. New Zealanders now need a permanent visa if they want to access a wide range of benefits. Definitely we had to learn the hard way. We just weren't aware of it at all. Couldn't believe that, you know, that our children's, even our children's children's have to suffer because we, we, weren't, we weren't here in 2001. Last year, Taina, a mining worker, paid $40,000 in tax. He paid a disability levy, but Lily won't ever be able to benefit from it. As a father, does that break your heart? Like, oh, definitely, definitely. It's, um, you know, to come over here and to work and work and work and to be a, uh, a contributor to, to this economy. Yeah, we have to pay the extra levy for um, a disability levy, yet we can't access it. And this immigrant reckons it's an intolerable situation. Both governments need to take equal responsibility for the huge cracks that are forming here because we're, we're living in a black hole. Meet the farthest flung political candidate for a Māori seat ever. Here I am in the Gold Coast, standing in Ikaroa Rafati because that's, that's where I lived for about 20 years before I came here. Um, but I'm actually Kaitahu descent, born and bred in Levin. So I've been around, I've got ties everywhere, but you know, at the end of the day, it makes me Māori. Her campaign message is that expats deserve their fair share. We come here for a better life. That's right, you didn't come to go No, we don't come here to bludge. Yep. Australia says it's going to cost them too much money to make any changes to the Social Security Act. But it actually isn't about that. What we're asking for are, are pathways to become permanent residents if we can. Because some 60% of New Zealanders who came after 2001 will never meet the criteria for permanent residency. What your chances of winning? Um, I have no idea. Uh, and at the end of the day, I don't have no sugar daddy at home who can fund this. I don't have a bus. I'm not in New Zealand. I don't have fancy placards or anything like that. But it's about sending a message. The Kiwis over here find out, hey, we can have a voice. Next election, we'll be formidable. But any talk of unequal rights fires up this mozzie. They know they can't come over here and get a benefit. So some people still, unfortunately, come over knowing they're not going to get any help from the government over here. I don't think we should cl complain about that. I think you are in your life what you make of it. Four to one. This one here is a no pineapple. Eight. Nadine owns two stores and is expanding to New South Wales. She believes Māori should be grateful. I do. I love it here. I love everything that it has to offer. You're allowed to dream. I love that I can show my kids that you don't have to grow up and work for somebody. But to use a bad bun, Australia can really be a tale of two burgers. Well, is this the best potato in? Hmm? Who makes the best burgers in town? Burger Brew. Burger yeah, it's got to be yeah. Burger Brew. Once a week, Jo Briars, her sons and the volunteer organisation she co-founded, puts on a dinner for homeless people. It's good. You can take home a good merry meal. Be good. After all that, they're all each up here in Ipswich. They're good cooks, they uh, do hangies and all that sort of stuff. And Māori aren't immune to sleeping rough. We've done stuff where we've taken whānau into our own homes to keep them off the street. You know, uh, we, we had a family uh, in January this year, uh, two adults in four tamariki sleeping in a van. The boy was like one month old. 
you don't have mahi, if you don't have any savings or any puti on the account, you can, you, know, you can go from up here to down here within like two to three weeks. It's not of their own doing. It could be, you know, you, hurt, you injure yourself at mahi or you injure yourself outside of mahi and you're not covered by work cover. In the last year, Kotahi Aroha has helped three and a half thousand Māori and Pacific Islanders in crisis. Oh, we definitely need help. It's very overwhelming at points. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard to walk away or you sit there, or I'm sitting here in my whare, you know, we're happy as, and I'm sitting there, I'm in the back of my mind, I, I've got, you know, we've got families that we've just, I feel like, I hope they're okay. If we voted, I reckon we could make a big difference. Big difference. <laughs> Lily's Fano feel like their calls for help amount to a tune falling on deaf ears. Yeah, no, we do feel like a sick class citizen. They will get told all the time, like, you Kiwis, and they all the use are over here. And the thing is not, all of us aren't over here. Even back home, the Aussies, they're entitled to everything that, you know, that we are back home. And for me, it just doesn't seem fair. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Papa.